everyone, my name is Gunther, and welcome back to Ottawa Zoo, which I don't think many of you thought you would ever see happen again. But today, we're going to take our beaver habitat, which looked like this, and turn it into something a little bit more like this. So sit back and enjoy as we put to use some of the skills we've gained since we last said goodbye to Ottawa Zoo. And hey, if you like the content, feel free to subscribe, but honestly, no pressure. So as with any normal rebuild, the first step, as always, is really we just got to tear down what we built. And it's kind of a sad thought considering, you know, you put a lot of time into something when you first start playing a game just to go back and take it all apart. And uh, not a fun experience, but weirdly enjoyable. So, hey, if you are new to Planet Zoo or even if you're not, maybe you've been playing for a little bit of time and uh, you have some old franchises or old sandbox zoos, I encourage you to go back and revamp. For me personally, I think part of the challenge is going to be rebuilding our exhibits within the existing footprint that we had. Now, we don't have too many exhibits within uh, Ottawa Zoo, so we may not see too many of these episodes. But like I said, I'm still really excited to kind of uh, work with this. Now, I'll let you guys know, and I'll be honest about this, I actually rebuilt this twice. Uh, the first time I made it a little bit too big and I wasn't really happy with it, so I wanted to go back. And part of the reason why I went back is I actually drew out what I wanted to put as a habitat for our North American beaver friends. And I had this amazing idea of having like, this elevated viewing platform because they are beavers. You want to get above them. And, you know, I think about my local zoo. Uh, this is actually how we view our beavers in our, in our zoo. It's a little bit higher. So I really wanted to kind of emulate that. Uh, and I didn't do that in the first build. So I actually went back and I started again. Now, I'm uh, using a lot of wood for this. And you might say, why are you using wood with some beavers? Don't they eat wood for uh, you know like a living? They are called uh, you know nature's builders, so you are right. And there's a reason for this. I have a plan. Uh, you're gonna see some liberal use of mesh. So we're essentially gonna have wood on the outside, which I think fits the theme really well for an Ameri uh, American beaver exhibit. Uh, and then on top of that, we're gonna have the mesh on the inside. So that's gonna be what protects the wood uh, from the beavers, maybe getting a little too uh, uh, enjoyable when they're you know taking a little bit of a snack on that wood. Now, there's two ways that we can build a habitat. We can do uh, one directional views, which is where you only have one way to view into the habitat, which is actually the easiest because you can build everything with that line of sight, or you can have a multi-directional view. Now, in our case, we're working with a pre-existing footpath. We made this in one of our very first uh, few episodes. So now we're kind of stuck with dealing with it. And the reality is we wouldn't tear up this existing pathway it's linked to the rest of the zoo, can't really get rid of it. So knowing that, I wanted to create this really cool glass viewpoint. And we did, it's all wood, I think it fits with the theme. We added in some additional mesh to uh, prevent the uh, beavers from you know eating at it. And then I think it was time for us to start working on our elevated viewing area. So finally, uh, whipped out our angry archer. Uh, he's gonna provide us some context as to how high we need to have our uh, custom fences, or custom barriers in this case. And I really wanted to have this really nice, deep brown uh, coloring for our wood. I just love the way this wood looks. I think it fits really well with the entire feel of the zoo. And I made this really cool little uh, guest barrier. I'm quite happy with the ability that I've uh, kind of put together when it comes to building personal uh, guest barriers. Now, on top of that, we are dealing with beavers, so we do need a water feature. And in all the time I've played this game, I have learned in order for it to have deep navigatable swimming area, you need to have a minimum of four meters of space. So that's why I kind of use that wood uh, wall panel to uh, make sure it was actually the four meters. It's a, a small handy dandy trick that I've uh, enjoyed and I've uh, found over the last uh, few months playing uh, Planet Zoo. Now, the entire theme for this uh, habitat for our beaver is going to be where would you find them? And for me, you're going to find them in the wilderness near a source of water. So in this case, we've put down the uh, initial area for our small little lake. Uh, and I thought the best way to kind of incorporate it would be to make it almost like a little cabin or woodcutter's cabin. And so utilizing uh, one log piece, which is pretty wild that you can do this with just one log piece, I created a full log cabin and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, admittedly, this is the second time I built our log cabin. Uh, and I've learned there's multiple different logs that you can utilize, uh, but I find that the piece I'm using is actually the uh, most effective because it gives you a little bit more vers uh, versatility. And you're gonna see that come to play. Now, of course, with any log cabin, you do need to have uh, a balcony. 
a little shelf there, you know, a little uh, canopy. So created it using some more of these lock pieces. And again, it looks pretty awesome. It, it shocks me what you can build with this game. And I think we can see the level of detail and care that has come from, you know, our first episode with Ottawa Zoo, uh, or even our last episode with Ottawa Zoo, and where we are at today. Now, of course, this is just not here as eye candy for our guests. This is actually going to act as the uh, shelter for our beavers. And I kind of agonized over this. In my eyes, you know, having a beaver uh, habitat, you'd want to have them stay in a dam. Uh, but building a dam in a planet zoo is not the easiest of tasks. I've actually built one uh, a few times. Uh, you saw in that before photo my attempt at building like a, a dam. It was pretty atrocious. Uh, so then I uh, landed on putting them in this log cabin and it worked out so well. Of course, utilize some more of those conservation pieces because it just they fit so well. They're so versatile. I'm super happy that uh, Frontier came out with this pack because it makes the job so much easier. Now, with uh, the majority of our uh, habitat kind of placed down, we have everything planned out. It's time for us to start working on our foliage and we utilized a liberal use of the uh, underwater hydrilla plant, uh, maybe more than we needed to. Uh, but I really wanted to add some more depth to our water feature. Now, when I think about creating lakes uh, or anything like that, lakes don't just drop right off as soon as you get into the water. It's a, usually a very gradual uh, downward movement and then it drops off. So it drops off, you know, maybe six feet into the lake or something like that. So tried to emulate it with this, where we created a one level where uh, you would be easily be able to kind of walk in and wade into the pool if you were, a, you know, an actual guest uh, at your log cabin out in the wilderness and then uh, kind of sunk it in even more. So that was the entire plan behind it. And then, of course, added a few additional uh, broken trees in there to kind of add a little bit of flavor to it. Now, of course, if you have a cottage on the water, what do you need to go with your cottage? You need a dock. Uh, you are going to want to enjoy uh, all of that nature can provide you. And the best way to do that is to have your own little dock. So we put one together, which is uh, surprisingly easy, uh, considering I've uh, never done something like this. And to add additional uh, features to it, really wanted to add in the idea that you have a canoe kind of just hanging there. Now, of course, you're not just going to let your canoe wade out into the lake. So also added in some rope to kind of uh, make it seem like it's been tethered to your dock. And again, uh, surprisingly turned out really well. In fact, even changing the color to that like richer brown makes it look really cool. Now, of course, utilizing our log cabin, you're going to need firewood. So I added in some stumps off in the distance. And the idea behind this is that you would have kind of sourced all of your wood locally. Uh, so we have some stumps left over. Uh, we can also kind of envision that maybe those beavers uh, were, you know, cutting down the trees. Maybe they were utilizing it on a dam that's not in this exhibit, uh, but something that we can kind of uh, think about. Now, returning back to our foliage, uh, there's really two ways that we can do uh, large open ground. One is we can feather in some different terrain paints, uh, long grass, short grass, dirt and stuff like that. Or number two, my favorite is you can take a lot of grass, uh, place it all down and then sink it into the ground. Now, the downside, of course, is you are adding a significantly large amount of pieces to your overall piece count, which can really slow down your game. But uh, I think it really uh, definitely pays off. Now, the last thing that I had kind of had to do uh, with this uh, this exhibit was to figure out something to do with our wooden walls. So originally, when I planned on doing this, I thought I was going to maybe have some bushes that were going to kind of mask everything and you weren't going to see too much of these wood walls off in the distance. As you can tell, that did not happen, so we needed to kind of cover it up. So what I utilized was a lot of hanging moss and ivy, and it kind of looks like it all grew uh, up or down, depending on what it is, uh, down all these cracks and crevices. And it actually fits really well and might actually be one of my more favorite ways of creating a natural uh, barrier in your exhibit. Now, it did have to kind of go through and add some additional grass pieces around the water uh, just to kind of cover it up and blend it all in. Kind of missed it when I was placing everything. Now, the last thing to really kind of uh, add some additional flavor to our new and improved beaver habitat is creating a new sunshade. And you can see off in the distance, we have our sunshade from Cedarbrook Park Zoo. And I originally placed it down and I shared a photo and I was like, hey, everybody in my Discord, what do you guys think of this? And somebody commented and they're like, hey, you really love your sunshade that you made. I was like, yeah, I do. It's, it's a really cool sunshade. But it challenged me to maybe build something a little bit different, a little bit newer, something more fresh. And I stumbled across this photo 
of the sunshades at a giraffe exhibit in uh, Zoo Atlanta. And I love the way it looked. It looked really fresh, really cool, and uh, something that would really work out. So I tried my hand at creating it. And really, it was just a few pieces. It was these uh, painted metal beams, uh, some cloth uh, blankets that are normally supposed to go on the wall. So I found them, painted them all white, and then uh, kind of curved them as much as I can. And uh, the thing that makes this sunshade really cool is that it's uh, a center anchor. Um, so normally when you have a sunshade, it's uh, not that big. It's not meant to be very big. So I added in these uh, girders and then kind of copied everything around and created this really cool sunshade. And I'm really happy with it. Uh, so you're going to see this and we're actually going to do a live tour. We haven't done a live tour in some time, but I think our beaver, our beaver exhibit deserves a live tour to see all that has changed within Ottawa Zoo. And I'm really happy with it. So I will say uh, you are going to see more of these episodes over the next little while as we kind of go back through Ottawa Zoo and revamp everything. Uh, there's definitely a lot of work we have on our hand plates, but I'm super excited to show you some more. And just like that, it is time for our live tour of our new and improved Beaver Creek. And we have a, uh, a few things that I want to show you today. Uh, of course, we have our uh, generic educational sign, something that we've uh, seen quite a few times on the uh, channel. Uh, but this is new. Uh, I uh, totally forgot um, when playing the game or when doing my speed build that uh, we are in franchise mode and we need to have some type of uh, donation bin. And the donation bins are pretty generic looking and I get the idea that you can kind of color them and stuff like that. They just don't look that good. Uh, so kind of uh, attempted my uh, first time to create uh, our own donation bin cover, which is really just like made with this African bead piece and then a bunch of signs uh, like leaf signs and then of course our beaver sign. And I gotta say it actually looks a lot better than just having a, a generic uh, donation bin. Like this looks a lot nicer. So really happy with uh, how it turned out. Of course, we have our two beavers. We have uh, jor -El and Vanessa, and uh, a perfect shot of them just kind of hanging out, sunbathing, uh, and uh, enjoying their, uh, their new home. And I think they're gonna be quite happy uh, with what we've done with the place. Of course, before we get into the rest of the build, uh, we have uh, the back end of our uh, new exhibit. We have some uh, educational conservation boards, which is always nice to see. We have some seating areas some bins, and then we have this really cool sign, which is called Feed the Local Builders. So this is kind of more of an interactive uh, piece where you can pay like $3 and then you get a chance to kind of feed the beavers. Uh, you know, it'd be a great way for donations to kind of come into the uh, the zoo and whatnot. Of course, they only run from 11 to 3 p.m. And we even added in some terms and conditions. Now, admittedly, these terms and conditions are actually uh, just pulled from a website. So uh, please do not read them. Uh, it's just there for show. <laughs> of course, we have our uh, our exhibit and looking at it from this direction and from this level i gotta say this uh looks so much better than our first attempt at creating a uh, beaver habitat and uh, funny enough the beaver habitat was an attempt to revamp an existing area because we originally had it broken into two and then we decided to make one habitat and uh we are back to making two habitats because we have like an empty space over here that we have to work with uh, but I'm really happy with kind of uh, how this all looks out. And even looking at like the foliage work off in the distance, this looks like a pond or a small lake where you would take your boat out and kind of enjoy uh, the, the water and the sun and just, you know, nature in general. And of course, as we make our way over, kind of see uh, a better view of the cabin. And I love the idea of having this little like water uh, enrichment item for our beavers because really it's kind of like a, a natural hot tub. You, you know, maybe at night you come out, you have your fireplace, you know, maybe you you, uh, you roast uh, some s'mores or melt some s'mores, I guess. Uh, and then maybe you head on over on those chillier nights into your natural hot tub uh, that the beavers are using. And I think that that's just a really cool idea and something that I was really happy with uh, how it all turned out. Of course, we have our uh, log cutting. Oh, that's not what we wanted to look at. <laughs> we have our log, uh, our cut logs over there. We have like a little hard, uh, harder piece of uh, wood, which we're using as kind of like our uh, stump to cut all of our logs. And then we have some trees that maybe uh, have broken or have been chopped down over time to uh, provide some uh, 
some uh, logs for our uh, cottage. Really happy with uh, how this looks uh, overall. Uh, not much was completed after uh, the speed build kind of finished. We really just uh, added in some of these educational posters and whatnot. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Of course, this is not going to be the end of Ottawa Zoo, and I kind of mentioned it earlier. Ottawa Zoo was something that was always a plan to kind of circle back when I had, um, you know, improved my skills. And I think we're in a position where we've improved and we have a lot that we need to kind of go back and uh, improve within Ottawa Zoo. Of course, we have our timber wolf habitat, which was our second habitat that we built uh, on Ottawa Zoo, or I guess third, considering uh, there were two habitats here. But we have that over there. We have our buffalo uh, habitat over there. Uh, we have uh, our Arctic section way up there. So we have quite a few habitats that we need to revamp. Um, so for those uh, who have seen Ottawa Zoo, in the comments below, let me know what you want to see uh, up, uh, updated next. Um, now, this is not to say that Cedarbrook Park Zoo is is stopping. Uh, it is not. Uh, we are definitely going to go back. I have uh, I have the next episode ready, almost ready to go. Um, but this is just something that was kind of a, a way to overcome some creative blocks. Uh, on Cedarbrook Park Zoo. I wanted to, you know, maybe take a crack at uh, uh, updating this and improving this and uh, quite happy with how it turned out. Definitely uh, walked out with some new sunshades. And I think this was uh, one of the things that was kind of I was struggling at in uh, in Cedarbrook Park Zoo was kind of creating a new sunshade. So I'm quite happy that this uh, this uh, helped out to uh, improve that. Uh, of course, uh, if you're feeling up to it, it does really help the channel out. subscribe. If not, that's totally cool. No pressure whatsoever. Uh, you know, I think I've said that a few times already, um, but uh, it does uh, it does help me out and lets me know I'm going in the right direction. Otherwise, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on this uh, journey. Hopefully this encourages you to go back into your old zoos and update some of your habitats, because uh, I got to say, Ottawa Zoo has a special place in my heart. I would love to see Ottawa Zoo uh, improved and, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, back where it back where it should be it's my hometown i want ottawa zoo to be uh as as good as possible so of course uh that's uh that's all i really wanted to say otherwise thank you so much and uh ciao for now everybody